This last module of the Six Sigma day will cover analyze, improve, and control. And then we're going to do a brief review. So during the analyze step, we're going to take all of the inputs that we've identified and review them versus the outputs. We're going to try to prioritize these so that, again, what we're not doing is working on 100 inputs. We're working on the, the more focused inputs. We're going to utilize a number of different tools. Uh, I've already exposed you a little bit to the CNE matrix and the FMEA. Um, I'm not going to talk too much about the multivari, ANOVA, correlation, and regressions, but those are some additional tools that you may see your uh, green belt or black belt, your project leader, bringing you through. They're, the, they're going to be the tool experts, and again, you're going to have some knowledge of some of these tools. What I'm going to do is go through some 5Y and some other tools uh, for you just briefly here so that you have a, a little bit better understanding. And again, you're going to help the team out um, by having a better understanding of these tools. One of the, the tools or, or one group of tools that you'll, you've already or you will have already been exposed to as a yellow belt will be the uh, seven quality tools that you will see as part of the process control day. And I'll leave the uh, further description of these to that day. Uh, if you will get a chance, you'll see four training modules there as well. You've also seen tools associated with Lean. Those are the tools that uh, would have been in the four modules that uh, are discussed as part of the Lean Day. We review either the downtime or the hospital acronym and a number of the different Lean tools, part of the House of Lean or the Lean Hospital that you would have already been exposed to a number of those tools. So those are some tools that you're also going to be utilizing during the analyze and improve stage of your process. So here's another way to look at the tools that are now in your toolbox or will soon be in your toolbox. Some of these you will have been exposed to at different levels than others. You will get additional training as you work with your green belt and black belt, uh, reviewing these tools as appropriate. Uh, they are going to be introduced to your project. You may not see some of these tools until you go through your green belt or black belt training. So again, these are some of the tools that you would have been exposed to as part of your yellow belt. The tool that we'll talk about right now is called the 5Y analysis. This is a tool that we use for root cause identification, root cause analysis. What we're trying to do is get past symptoms and identify the root cause. We say 5Y, um, it's simply the, the name of the tool we may ask five, uh, excuse me, we may ask why more than five times. We may ask why seven, eight, nine times. It's till we get to an actionable item. And that is something that we're going to then uh, identify as the uh, cause of our problem and then work to implement some sort of corrective action so that that doesn't uh, cause issue in, in the future. Here's an example, uh, one that you've probably seen at one point or another. For the one of a nail, a shoe was lost. So we lost a shoe because of the nail. Because we lost a shoe, the horse was lost. We lost the horse, and therefore we lost the rider. We lost our riders, and we lost our army. If you lose your army, you're going to lose a battle. And when you lose your battle, you're going to lose the war. For want of the war, the kingdom was lost. And all of this for the want of a horseshoe nail. So how we would have addressed this relative to 5Y it would have been, why did you lose your kingdom? And the answer would have been, we lost the war. Why did you lose the war? Well, we lost the battle. And so on. Army, rider, horse, shoe back to nail. Now we can go even further. We've asked why several times already. Uh, we can ask why a few more times. Why did you lose the nail? Well, possibly we lost the nail because it was too small. Well, why did you, why was the nail too small? The nail was too small because we used a new vendor who used a old obsolete drawing. 
why did you use a new vendor vendor or why did you uh, use an old drawing and possibly the old drawing was um, the only thing we had we hadn't updated the drawing we hadn't um, you know our, our our old supplier had a problem and we needed to go out and get additional nails made so if we come to find out that we had a, a obsolete drawing that was uh, around um, and we had a way to put a fix on that then we've already gotten to an actionable item um, why did we why were we allowing our why did our system allow us to buy something that was obsolete uh, or why did we approve a, a new supplier with a uh, different type of metal uh, or or whatever the case can be so again we're going to ask why seven eight nine ten times until we get to that actionable item that root cause here's another example why were last month's sales so low because our main customer wasn't satisfied okay with a shipment uh, why wasn't they why weren't they satisfied uh, they were slightly smaller so here's you know again very similar to our why were they smaller? Um, they used an, an old drawing. How could we have mistakenly used the wrong drawing? Because our, we have a new documentation engineer or production engineer that didn't know the difference. Why wasn't he trained? We haven't developed the training manual for this. Well, the other part of this is wh why are documents so easily retrieved by new people? You know, are they, should they be locked away, uh, marked somehow? So there's a couple different ways you can actually be addressing this and a couple different ways that your 5Y can, can uh, take you. So again, you're going to ask it. You're going to do this most likely with a group of people um, in order to get past the symptoms down to the root cause of the problem. So here's a 5Y um, analysis sheet that we can use. Uh, it's part of a, a more formal corrective action, but you can use this report right here to take one of your problems and just perform a 5Y on it. And again, don't stop at 5. Um, if you've gotten to a, an actionable item at 2 or 3 or 4, which I doubt, but it may happen, um, then certainly stop there. But go as far as you need to until you feel like you, you have a good actionable item and, and you have addressed your root cause. During the improve step in our process, we are going to look to implement some enhancements to our system. I like to use the word enhancement relative to um, change or improvements. When you change a process, you can make some good changes or you can make some bad changes. Uh, it's semantics, but I like the, the term enhancement because when I enhance a process, it only gets better. So. Uh, hopefully we can go in there with a nice positive attitude and, and make those enhancements to our processes. Some of the tools that we'll use to look at process optimization, design of experiments, which is DOE. Um, we may attempt a pilot run to, to uh, try out our new process. Rather than just turning on the, the process, we may run it for a couple days or with a, only a certain type of pro product. Um, the other thing that it's always nice to do is run some uh, additional testing or another design of experiment to confirm results. Uh, maybe a second uh, run very similar to the pilot run that would confirm the results that we had. Um, we'll be looking at updating our value stream and process maps during this stage. So as we develop uh, enhancements we're actually taking information from our previous steps in our process. The define, measure, and analyze steps in our process, those uh, opportunities that we've identified, this is where we're actually uh, going to start looking to implement them. So some of the ideas and some of those process uh, enhancements um, that we've uh, talked about, this is the, the stage where we're actually going to start to make those changes, monitoring the outputs at each of the steps so that we can uh, determine whether these changes that we're making, these enhancements that we're making, are actually having that positive impact that we, we want it to have. There's going to be some items that you will identify that um, you're going to need people to follow up on. Um, you have a minimum here in red. Um, the item description, 
who is responsible. I usually like to see one person's name there when it's more than one person's responsibility. It's no one's. So, uh, you know, to give it some true ownership, I usually only list one person's name there. Um, and then what is the date that that item is due? So the, here's my action item list type of project management tool so that we understand what needs to be done, who's going to do it, and when it's going to be done. You can add some additional information um, to, to help identify these and group these together um, in using some other columns. But as a minimum, these are the three columns that you should be doing. And then periodically, um, as you're working your project, making sure people are doing what they're supposed to be doing. If there's any problems, obviously addressing that as needed. So during the control phase of our process, we've implemented some changes. They look like they're, they're, um, they're doing good. This is the time where we're going to turn the process back over to our process owner. Um, we're going to have updated procedures and documentation. People will have um, been trained to this new procedure. Um, our implementation control plan will document what should be happening in the process going forward. If we have any uh, measurement systems that are in place, uh, we're going to want to be monitoring those for some period of time so that we can see this running in, in live production. And again, whether this is in a testing operation or in an office, we want to make sure that the goals um, that we've attained uh, are maintained. All right, so we, we are going to achieve an enhanced process. We want to make sure that we're maintaining that. So we'll determine what our finished capability is here, and then we'll look to maintain that capability in the upcoming uh, time period. So some of the things that you're going to need as part of this reaction plan would be, you know, what do you do when things don't go as according to plan? You know, who is contacted? Um, what procedures need to be kicked in? Um, you know, what additional systems need to be, um, you know, maybe started. If you have a, um, a process where you're filling out certain amount of information and data, maybe you're processing requisitions, and one person can handle a backlog of up to five or six at any given time, if that backlog goes above that number six, um, who is the backup person that we call in to help with that additional workload so that we don't have requisitions that go unprocessed for days and days and days. So this is where we're monitoring our process and we have reaction plans, we have control plans to identify what needs to happen uh, with our process to maintain this level of performance that we've now uh, obtained. All right, so we've gone through the uh, DMAIC process, now it's time to control it so we don't lose all those gains that we've worked so hard for. Six Sigma has been around for a while and the reason I like to call uh, the uh, program operational excellence is because it takes some of these terrific tools of Six Sigma, Lean, and Process Control and ties it together into a uh, program that is ever changing and enhancing. And there's going to be some uh, big benefits relative to cost savings, increased uh, productivity and profitability um, when you've implemented a Six Sigma Lean and Process Control uh, tool program. Overcoming some of the obstacles uh, is making certain that everyone within your organization is uh, aware of the program and they are trained at even at the most basic level. Um, without accountability and involvement of uh, everyone within the organization, um, you're going to have a problem, a project uh, and uh, a program that's going to struggle. So be aware of, of these obstacles and uh, you know implement a, a system that's going to address them up front as opposed to having to fix them later on. So the Six Sigma day, you've basically been exposed to a number of different tools. Probably the biggest takeaway is that you're going to combine the different um, talents of people with the right project with the right tools. And you're going to be following this DMAIC roadmap 
of defining, measuring, analyzing, improving, and controlling your process. And you'll work your project through them down this filter, identifying all of the inputs, and then working to the point where we're going to be addressing those significant few as opposed to the insignificant many. We need to understand which of those that we need to um, have the most controls over. Those are the ones that have the greatest impact on our output. The worksheet that we are going to ask you to submit, this is one of the three assignments, would be the Six Sigma worksheet. This one, we are asking you to put together a process map. As you develop the process map, of, of the existing process that you have right now, something small, approximately 10 steps, plus or minus a few. Uh, we want you to label the um, steps, each of the uh, steps within the process with times that are associated with the, um, the product or reports or the thing moving through your process. So if you're processing a requisition or an invoice or a patient, uh, we want to know how long uh, you know, that patient or that uh, item spends in each of those steps. We also want you to label whether those steps are value added or non value added. Make note of which uh, parts of the, of the process you would eliminate and why. And then, optional, um, I have had a few people do this, is to provide us with a photo of the area. Basically, what we're looking for here is enough information so that we understand uh, that you have a uh, good knowledge of this tool and that we will also be providing feedback to you along with the other worksheets in your test. Good luck with your Six Sigma worksheet.